Hi friends! I'm Lulu and welcome to Judson Sunday Arts, where kids of all ages can make art that matters. For those of you joining us today with low vision, I am a white 34 year old woman with dark blonde hair and I'm wearing a burgundy cardigan over a pink and um, black spotted shirt. There is a bookcase behind me with lots of books and other things. You can see two doors as well and some art that I have hanging on the wall. There's also a rainbow pillow next to me. Today we're going to make signs that celebrate black queer angelic troublemakers. You will need something sturdy to write or draw on like a piece of cardboard or poster board or cardstock. The inside of a cereal box would work well and something to write or draw with like markers or paints. Um, but really anything that you have at home you can use. And if you like to make graphic art or collage, um, go for it. The sky is the limit. If you tuned into Andy's lesson on January 24th, you might remember the story of John Lewis, a civil rights leader and U.S. Senator who literally put his life on the line to end segregation and change unfair laws that discriminated against anyone that wasn't white. And today, we're going to learn about another civil rights leader that many people have never heard of. His name is Bayard Rustin. Bayard Rustin was an openly gay man who worked with John Lewis and Martin Luther King Jr. And like Lewis, who talked about getting into good trouble, Bayard said, we need in every community a group of angelic troublemakers. Let's watch a cartoon about him together. On August 28, 1963, Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his I Have a Dream speech at the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom. That day, nearly a quarter million people gathered on the National Mall to demand an end to the discrimination, segregation, violence, and economic exclusion black people still faced across the United States. None of it would have been possible without the march's chief organizer, a man named Bayard Rustin. Rustin grew up in a Quaker household and began peacefully protesting racial segregation in high school. He remained committed to pacifism throughout his life and was jailed in 1944 as a conscientious objector to World War II. During his two-year imprisonment, he protested the segregated facilities from within. Wherever Rustin went, he organized and advocated, and was constantly attuned to the methods, groups, and people who could help further messages of equality. He joined the Communist Party when Black American civil rights were one of its priorities, but soon became disillusioned by the party's authoritarian leanings and left. In 1948, he traveled to India to learn the peaceful resistance strategies of the recently assassinated Mahatma Gandhi. He returned to the United States armed with strategies for peaceful protest, including civil disobedience. He began to work with Martin Luther King Jr. in 1955 and shared these ideas with him. As King's prominence increased, Rustin became his main advisor, as well as a key strategist in the broader civil rights movement. He brought his organizing expertise to the 1956 bus boycotts in Montgomery, Alabama. In fact, he had organized and participated in a transportation protest that helped inspire the boycotts almost a decade before. His largest scale organizing project came in 1963 when he led the planning for the National March on Washington. The possibility of riots that could injure marchers and undermine their message of peaceful protest was a huge concern. Rustin not only worked with the DC police and hospitals to prepare, but organized and trained a volunteer force of 2,000 security marshals. In spite of his deft management, some of the other organizers did not want Rustin to march in front with other leaders from the South because of his homosexuality. Despite these slights, Rustin maintained his focus, and on the day of the march, he delivered the marcher's demands in a speech directed at President John F. Kennedy. The march itself proceeded smoothly, without any violence. It has been credited with helping pass the 1964 Civil Rights Act, which ended segregation in public places and banned employment discrimination and the 1965 Voting Rights Act, 
which outlawed discriminatory voting practices. In spite of his decades of service, Rustin's positions on certain political issues were unpopular among his peers. Some thought he wasn't critical enough of the Vietnam War, or that he was too eager to collaborate with the political establishment, including the president and Congress. Others were uncomfortable with his former communist affiliation. But ultimately, both his belief in collaboration with the government and his membership to the Communist Party had been driven by his desire to maximize tangible gains and liberties for black Americans, and to do so as quickly as possible. Rustin was passed over for several influential roles in the 1960s and 70s, but he never stopped his activism. In the 1980s, he publicly came out as gay and was instrumental in drawing attention to the AIDS crisis until his death in 1987. In 2013, 50 years after the March on Washington, President Barack Obama posthumously awarded him the Presidential Medal of Freedom, praising Rustin's march towards true equality, no matter who we are or who we love. Bayard Rustin famously said that every community needs a group of angelic troublemakers, people willing to stand up and speak out against the status quo, and students around the world have always been uniquely positioned to do just that. Become a part of TED-Ed's free Student Talks program to practice putting your ideas, visions, and hopes into words that can spread across the globe and affect change. And while you're at it, meet other passionate students from over 130 countries who are claiming their space and their futures. Visit ed.ted.com slash student talks to get started. What did you notice? One of the most important things to remember is that Bayard Rustin was purposely left out of the history that we know about the civil rights movement because he was openly gay. I don't know about you, but that makes me really mad. It doesn't matter who you love, what your gender identity is, where you're from, or if you have a disability. If you fight to make the world better for everyone, your story matters. So now, it's art making time. What black, queer, angelic troublemakers do you know? At Judson, that looks like your parents, your ministers, and members of our congregation. In the world today, that might look like you, or your friends and family, or like Alicia Garza, India Moore, D.L. Stewart, or Laverne Cox. If we're talking about ancestors, that could be Audre Lorde, Bayard Rustin, James Baldwin, Marsha P. Johnson, and Stormy DeLarvery. Who else can you think of? Choose one or a few black, queer, angelic troublemakers and make a sign that celebrates them. You could draw what they look like or find one of their quotes and write it big for people to see. You could spend five minutes or a whole day making it. Celebrate with me, the black queer folks in our community. Here's the sign that I made um, using the inside of a cardboard box that I cut in half um, and some yellow acrylic paint. Um, I used the quote from Bayard Rustin, we need in every community a group of angelic troublemakers. And then I wrote his name and also glued on a picture of him that I printed. Um, from the internet. If you love what you made, send it to me so I can feature it on another edition of Judson Sunday Arts. Be safe, wear your masks, and happy art making friends. See ya!